All right, guys, so we've just got um, Calm Portal is here, the setting for our masterclass on the topic of um, mindset and mental health and trying to stay fit and everything during this sort of um, isolation. Everyone's restricted at home and it's really challenging, I guess, a head game sort of thing. So we're going to um, let Khan take away in a second, starting with a few pointers and things like that as he's been through a hell of a lot in the mental health realm before. And um, just also, yeah, it'd be good to hear from him, especially so I fitness up because he's one of our, one of Australia's top CrossFit athletes. So take it away, Khan. Mate, thanks for having us on. Um, yeah, I guess sort of in the same boat as everyone else, man. Like, I think it's just more than anything, the thing that's difficult at the moment is the uncertainty and not having a clear not having really a clear understanding of when things are going to change back, how they're going to change back in what order. And um, I guess the biggest hurdle for me at the moment is I spent a lot of the last 12 months uh, working with a sports psych. And one of the big things we were working on was kind of putting uh, competition and being an athlete as my priority. It's something that I think maybe when I first started competing was definitely my priority. And then, as life happened and certain things happened, it became, it was, it was a priority, but it wasn't the priority. And there were other things that kind of definitely interfered with that. And I let other things maybe as like a safety blanket, um, take, take more of my time and attention. So yeah, we sort of spent <laughs> like the last 12 months really uh, working towards making this year, like a bit of a kind of, I don't know, like making it, making this year, like a really, really having a red hot co and, making yeah like i put a lot of things on hold at the start of this year like my studies and stuff like that to kind of do this um yeah make make training the thing and then obviously with everything taken away that it, it kind of shifts and so there's been a period but like it's funny like i don't like like yeah you know that sucks but it doesn't suck anywhere near as bad as some other people are going through so that perspective often brings me back down when I do find myself getting pissed off. But, you know, uh, like I'm only human. Like my world is my world. And if things uh, go wrong in my world, like that's going to cause frustration and anxiety as it does in everyone's world. And I think that idea of feeling shame and guilt around feelings and certain feelings, like, you know, um, I've seen it massively on social media. So like, uh, let's say, celebrities for example that are going hey like just sending out love and support to people um and then people are tearing them down because they're like man like you you can't feel frustrated you can't feel sad and angry but like these are just part of being human whether you've been affected greatly or in a minor way so yeah, yeah man i've just been like yeah i've got the perspective i understand that my life's like still great and everything like that uh certainly <laughs> lacking a little bit of motivation and clarity in my training but it's just trying to yeah, take it day by day, same as everyone else, waiting for some sort of answer as to what's going on. And you said 100%, there is always someone out there worse off. As much as hard as it is believed, there is always someone out there that is much worse off. So like, oh, it's not yeah. hard to believe at all, though. That's the thing. Like, it's so clear that there are some people that this has just been so fundamentally yeah. life-changing for that my heart goes out to all of them. And even just like the first responders who are still working, who are just grinding away day after day, like those people. <laughs> yeah. Like it's funny. This is a good tangent. Um, I did a podcast the other day with a mate of mine and he's doing this 21 day, no uh, complaining challenge. Yeah. And I had a few people message me afterwards and they're like, Oh, that's amazing. Like I'd love to do that. And one woman, and I sort of said, I took the perspective that I didn't think it was the best challenge for everyone. I yeah. think that some people should be able to air their grievances. If you're having a tough time, you should be able to kind of go, oh, actually, I'm having a rough day or whatever. And this first responder reached out to me and they said, oh, like, oh, yeah, I think this would be a great challenge for me and some of the people at my work to get behind. You know, we're all so stressed at the moment and it'd be good to stop complaining. I was like, listen, honestly, like the, what you guys are doing is probably ridiculously stressful. Like I think it's probably healthy for you guys to vocalize some of your yeah. frustrations, like get it off your chest, get it out there and then don't dwell on it by all means. Cause like, I don't know, maybe like do like a dulled down version, but right. yeah, man, we're all, everyone's like, and this is something that's been a huge thing for me, like with like my ongoing mental health stuff. So cause everyone's got their battles. Everyone's got their journey. Yeah. And yeah, you're right. There's always people way worse than you. So always people going through the same thing as you just is it's how it's been human man yeah and i guess that's kind of a good segue into 
just mentioned your past history of mental health, how you kind of, as you started that, you are progressing through and everything was going well. And then did you feel that it kind of turned upside down and going into this whole isolation thing or you're able to maintain and continue that upwards growth through mental health? I think it's been phasey, man. I think I was alarmingly for me, someone that does tend to dwell on the negative. I was alarmingly positive at the start of it all. Like I was just really kind of like, yeah, you know what? This doesn't change anything. This doesn't change me working towards X, Y, Z. Um, But so like the main thing that I do suffer from is uh, like a form of OCD, but majority of the time is anxiety. Like I struggle really bad with it. And one of the worst triggers for me with my anxiety is periods of um, uncertainty, and where I don't feel like uncertainty and lack of sense of purpose, like I'll just start to c- catastrophize about what could go wrong and that can kind of send me spiraling. And I think I definitely went through probably like a two week period where I just, I don't know, like it's almost like the first sort of three weeks there was this novelty and I was still really upbeat about it. And then there was kind of a two week period where I was just like, man, I, I like fuck this. And I just started to, I was just super anxious. Um, but I kind of, Picked, pulled myself out of it towards the back end of it. Um, I would say like I'm still probably more anxious than usual at the moment, but um, yeah, just finding I have like my little, my, my day-to-day mental health plan, if you will, is um, I try to set myself like four completely controllable, uh, actionable, simple goals, like four little things that I know if I do that in a day, I'll probably feel pretty good. Um, and they're just to move, to learn, to give, and to play. Um, so I think I've spoken about this like a few times. And like if I can hit those four little goals in a day, like I'll have a good day, and that's that's good for my mental health. Like I like take away move, take away the purpose for movement. Like take away I need to train like I'm going to the CrossFit Games and go cool, uh, go for a jog with no timer, just listening to some music. Um, somewhere where there's no people around so I can't see someone in the distance and try and chase them down. (laughs) The competitive athlete comes out of me all the time. (laughs) Um, So no jogging around Centennial Park. But yeah, or just go and do like an EMOM where it's like I know I'm going to just work for 30 seconds of the minute at a real cruisy pace and just do that for a period of time. Um, Then learning is like I try to spend at least an hour a day reading and that's typically non-fiction about something I'm interested in. Um, a lot of the time I'll listen to an audio book while I'm walking my dog. Um, it kills two birds with one stone, get an hour of listening in each day and it's a great way to just get through, get through like a book every two weeks, just, just listening in that time on the walk. Um, and then give is pretty broad. It's like just, hang on a second, speaking of my dog. Sorry, just yeah. getting yourself. You're all right. There you go. Sorry. Um, give, I use as like a broad sense. It's like, it's not going in, you know, donating money or something like that. It can be, as, it's just doing an act of service for someone else. Like, uh, like doing something, you know, whether it's a, a call to one of my mates, I haven't caught up with in a while, like just having a yarn to them or, you know, um, flicking someone, you know, just sending a group text out to the fellas, just checking in on everyone or, you know, go have coffee. It's just doing something. Or I'd say connect might be even a better word, like just doing something for someone else. And it can be super duper small all the way up to something like bigger than that. And then play is obviously just doing something every day for the joy of it. Yeah. Like something that is just, there is no productivity, no self-development, no growth, no benefit over and above just feeling good while I'm doing that. Awesome, I like that. That's such, that's such good vision. It's awesome. And that uh, kind of gives me a bit more control over my mental health. I'm like, okay, you know what? If I hit those four things, I've had a pretty damn good day and I can hit those four things every single day. So it gives you that, like, gives me that control in a time where control is kind of very much up in the air. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So you find yourself pretty confident you can hit those four tasks easily every day. You just got them set there to make sure you hit them and you'll be able to hit them. Yeah, I mean, like some days, and don't get me wrong, it's not to say that I just kind of magically, if I'm having a really bad day and my anxiety is really, really bad or I'm yeah. just in a really bad headspace, um, it's not to say that I can just magically go, ah, remember your four things, you're going to be sweet. Like, nah, so shit days. Like, yeah, okay. Um, and days where I don't hit those four things. And another thing that I'm really good at and that's taken a long time 
is to just accept that there will be shit days and accept that there will be days where my mental health will get a little bit out of my control or I will feel a little bit more like things just won't feel good and just being super comfortable feeling shit. Like I just, I don't let it, I try not to let it overtly affect things around me okay. and I just sit with those feelings. And I think that's a hugely beneficial thing. That's been a hugely beneficial thing for me as an athlete, because I think that athletes can get caught up in the negative emotions that go with competing and performance. And I think they can try to resist them and find ways to, deal with them when they're feeling them but quite often the best way to deal with them the negatives or that i've found anyway is to just be sit with them just accept them like go, okay cool like i feel really anxious and shitty and it fucking sucks but that's the what that's where i'm at at the moment cool just ride that out yeah okay cool cool i like that um so i know ralphie had a question as regarding like that sort of thing like mental health on training stuff it looks to do yeah uh, Correct me if I'm wrong here, but two days a week, two double days a week, and get up yep. earlier and um, hit the session first thing in the morning. But he's seems to be struggling to get up, just find himself feeling snooze and can't, and just come out with this itchy oh, it's too cold or any some some sort of bullshit like that. So just that's correct, Rafi. After like how you get through that mentally, just to okay, get up and do it. Is that? specific to the current state of the world or just in general oh, in, in probably more so recently because now obviously being at home and in this situation like i'm still working every day but i found myself yeah. a little bit more time to actually yeah. do that and now with the gym just being outside like i've got one in my in my garage so basically yeah. i've got no excuse but that's sort of like i'm fighting with myself every morning you wake up and you're just like oh it is too cold i could just stay in bed that extra Can I play devil's advocate and ask why you feel like you need to train a couple of times a day? Yeah, maybe. I don't. I don't. Well, I don't really know. I think I want to really focus on my performance more than anything because. Yeah. I mean, I probably can just do my afternoon sessions because I do do five five sessions a week. But I just mm -hmm. want to get that little edge on on things, if you know what I mean. But why? I, think, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe just for myself. Probably just for myself, basically. That's. Do you that's have like? Do you have a goal? A performance based goal? Oh. Not really. Like we, I started sort of getting back into competing a little bit. Like I did a few comps yep. there a couple of years ago, and then sort of little little Billy Billy girl came along, so I sort of stopped. Yeah. Playing. But um, that'll probably be my goal towards the next year is to get back into sort so of. So hundred percent, man. Again. Like I hear where you're at, and I've been struggling. So I was trying to, especially because they've kept the games. Um, they've said that they're going to keep the games, right? Yep. So to me, as soon as they announced that, I thought, sweet, I've got to go back to my training routine of two sessions a day uh this time to this time get up at this time blah 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 blah. um there's two ways i guess you can look at it this week i really put my foot down and decided i was going to get um be more disciplined with it yeah. and i was going to go for those two like so i blocked out so every day i'm going to train 9 to 10 30 and 3 30 to 5 now i've hit that one day so far this week right yeah. other things popped up but with having them in, so setting that schedule, basically I then told myself if something that was unavoidable popped up in that time, I'd have to do it. But there was a period of not doing it. And I think sometimes when you find you're lacking the motivation and the drive to do something, you either need to step back from it and take the foot off the brakes for a while. If you just say to yourself, actually, do you know what? For the next week, I'm just going to train 90 minutes a day. Mm. You might then find that after doing that for a week or two weeks, it builds that kind of motivation to get up and do it again. Like our mind is the same as our body. We have a finite amount of energy mentally and physically. And if every day, like you're going through this internal dialogue every day where you're like, I should be up at this time. I should be getting out of bed. And what happens when you don't do that is there's a little small amount of, I guess, uh, shame. And, and I mean, shame's a very, very heavy word to use, but there's a small amount of kind of like, you beat yourself up about it. Yeah, right? exactly. And it's only on a small scale, but that whole process in of itself, it's negative emotion and negative emotion is taxing. So yeah. you're expending mental energy and getting no return from it. Yeah. So replenish that mental energy, take some time away. Secondary to that would be get a clear goal because without yeah. a clear goal and a clear sense of purpose, it's yeah. super hard to motivate yourself. Yeah, and yeah, so for yeah. me at the moment, my goal is simply try to do 90 minutes like 90 minutes a day from this time to this time if there's nothing else on so if i don't have 
uh, some work stuff that's unavoidable. For that 90 minutes, I'm in the gym. I'm not using my phone. My phone goes away. It's a big one for me because I'm a sucker for that. And that is the goal. So that's really easy for me to tick off. If I can get into that routine, then I can start to bring intensity back. Yeah, okay. The other thing is don't try it. Like, if you're going to train at times that are difficult for you to train, yep. make that the most enjoyable part of your session and the least intense part. Yeah, okay. Yep. So that's a big one too. Like, yeah, I, I prefer afternoon training. So I yeah, do I my... Afternoon. Yeah, so that's when I'll yeah. hit my harder Metcons and stuff like that. And in the morning, I'll just do like percentage work or really low intensity conditioning yeah okay awesome that yeah that was really really insightful that was good did you take a little away from that Ralphie yeah mate um yeah that's really good too because I mean I suppose at the moment transition trying to in becoming a coach as well sort of then do my my certificate three and four in training and, and that that's sort of another reason I suppose that would be one of the goals too is to sort of try and lead from the front. So that's why I suppose that would be another reason in my head is to try and get that extra edge as well as the whole competitive side of things. I think that's where I think if I'm doing something more, then I can teach people that extra thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, so to that I'd say one of the most valuable things, I mean, I don't do a lot of particularly individual coaching, but obviously I'm around athletes all the time and, and like young athletes that want to kind of come up and compete. One of the most valuable lessons you'll be able to teach is exactly the thing that I just said to you. Yeah, and you'll yeah. have to go through that yourself where you'll actually have to take a step back to take yeah. two steps forward. Yeah, and if, you've, yeah. if, you, if you can see firsthand that that actually benefited you, then you've actually you've done more, more as a coach or you've learned more as a coach that you're then able to pass on to your athletes from having gone through that. Yeah, okay. Cool. So more focusing on quality than quantity. 100%, and man. And yeah. like, so another, another like one more thing on this, and I think it's just something that everyone can kind of work with as well. When you go into the gym, have something. And so my sports psych, he makes me write it up. For every piece of my training, I have a focus. Only maybe once or twice a week is that focus, go as hard as you can in this. Like this is a 10 out of 10 effort piece of work. Everything else, and particularly when I'm struggling with motivation, I'll find little intra-workout goals that are not going to blow me out of the water. It might be cool. So I've got sets of 10 chest bar in this workout. I'm just going to focus on the 10 chest bar unbroken. If that means I'm not, tra- I'm not pushing anything else as hard, that's fine. I have a focus for every piece and I base that focus like on my mindset going into the training session. If I'm all over the place, I'm not going to try and push really, really hard. If I'm really tired and sore, I'm not going to try and do massive unbroken sets. But I'm like, if I, if I do 30 chest bar in a workout versus doing 40 by going hard, it's still some volume and I've still got some adaptation to that and I'll still get some improvement from that session. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. So find, find, find a focus that you're mentally ready to do. I mean, obviously, physically, you've got to be able to do it, but find yeah. a focus that matches your state of mind going into the workout. Yeah, true. Sounds good. No worries. So um, I personally haven't... Is there anything else, Ralph? No, that's all good, bro. I cleared it all up. I um, personally talk? haven't listened to your any of your podcast episodes yet, but my partner has, and she... Told me to listen to a few of them, but do you want to, um, I guess, fill the guys in what it's about, and I guess a bit of a um, self plug sort of thing on your podcast, something like that? Yeah, bro. So it's it's new, and it kind of had a little week uh, off. I've wanted to do one for a while, just because I think I'm extremely lucky. Um, you know, I'm coming to the end of my like probably the last sort of couple of maybe three years of my athletic career, and. What I'm very lucky to have is access to a very broad range of people, both in the CrossFit and fitness space and even outside that, just been lucky enough to meet some really interesting people on my journey. And um, I think the thing that I've always found the most fascinating, obviously what I want to go into is psychology and human behavior. And I feel like that's something that's always fascinated me, particularly being at the top of of an industry, I suppose, is the way that um, like people kind of, develop mentally and emotionally at the same time as physically. And that's one thing that's been the thing that's always interested me the most. So it's called the I am project. And the whole idea is it's about how people become who they are and who they want to be. So, I mean, I guess all about like it's as broad as you want it to be. Everyone's got a story and it's kind of pulling 
from those stories things that people can use on their own journeys of like, like self-discovery and growth and yeah I, I mean as much it's as much for myself like I still believe myself to be on that journey and I feel like there's so many things that I'm super interested in um uh, trying to learn and hoping to kind of learn learn at the same time as provide that information for other people as well yeah, and I actually did <laughs> I did the majority of a journalism degree and spent a year at NIDA training as a TV and radio presenter. So I've got a little bit of a background in kind of the, the whole interviewing thing. So I thought it'd be a cool little way to combine an old passion of mine with, uh, with yeah, the current state of the world and where I'm at. Yeah, awesome, awesome. That's good. So did you study long at NIDA doing the film school stuff? I did, I did the one year, so I did their one year TV and radio presenters course okay. in 2012, I think it was, maybe yeah. back then. Yeah, and actually, yeah, it was because it was the year that I started CrossFit. Yeah, cool. And so the podcast is new, I believe, yeah, only a few weeks old, right? Yeah, I think we've got four episodes. I chatted to young Jay Crouch yesterday afternoon. Uh, yeah. No, Monday after, uh, Tuesday afternoon. Chat to him. So that'll be the next one. Um, I've got another solo episode after that, and then I've got um, hopefully just confirming a time. A mate of mine that was just on a massive. Uh, reality international reality tv show oh, cool. to chat to him about that so i think it was super interesting to kind of hear like all i mean like jesus i don't even know how you would mentally prepare yourself to go on something and then potentially have it blow up it was that one on netflix the too hot to handle i don't know if you've seen it oh. but it's a new one and it's just blown up um so i want to hear like i want to hear his story about how he's dealing with with all that how he dealt with the pressure and stress of knowing that he was going to go out there on that. So, yeah, I mean, and there's a few other guests that I'm kind of trying to link up some times with, but um, yeah, just hoping to keep the ball rolling. I might kind of do like 10 episodes and break for a bit, another 10 episodes, like a season type, type thing, yeah. just because I've got a million and one other things to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can imagine. I'm going to overcommit imagine. myself, but yeah, man, I'm enjoying it so far anyway. And with, um, I guess, competing international stuff, you're kind of a bit of a... Um, renowned traveler so what's your next planned destination outside um a competition location is at the moment <laughs> i don't know, I don't know if anywhere, they open up, yeah, if they open up that new zealand travel bubble i might head over there yeah go skiing just even though i don't ski just why not <laughs> oh mate um i was really looking forward to i was meant to be in egypt for the egyptian championship okay cool um and i was going to do a little bit of traveling around that but uh, obviously this that that got put aside um so i'd love to i'd love to go there still um i'd love to do south america i've never done i've never been to south america so i think next season i'm definitely going to try and hit like a sanctional there and then travel off the back of that but um, i might that's what i kind of do like i'll find like a sanctioned event or like maybe run a workshop or a seminar somewhere um and then just tack a bit of travel off the back of that somewhere in that vicinity but i mean i've been I mean, love Europe, so I've been there a bit the last kind of few years and can't wait to get back. But, mate, I don't know, whoever opens their borders first, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, I guess, anyway, to wrap things up, where can people find you? Check out your stuff, obviously, outside your podcast. That's on um, iTunes. The I Am Project. I mean, look, the easiest way is just through my Instagram. That's where I plug and push all the different bits and pieces I've got going on, and that's just at I Am Calm Porter. Um, yeah, jump on there. Like, it's got links to pretty much, like, it's got some online programming. It's got uh, podcast, all that sort of stuff as well. But, um, yeah, I, I guess that's probably the easiest place. Oh, awesome, awesome. No worries, Carmel. Really do appreciate you giving up your time on a Thursday evening. Greatly no appreciate dramas, it. No dramas, man. Been uh, really honestly, my pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. No worries, bud.